Sharon Salzberg explains how generosity is the beginning of gladdening the mind. Um, they say that the best kind of generosity comes from a sense of inner abundance or at least inner sufficiency. So that in giving or making an offering of our time, of our energy, of something material, we don't end up feeling depleted or we've lost something. We're we somehow bereft uh, because there's enough basis, there's enough inner abundance to be able to offer um, without that, that other kind of seeming consequence. And the practice of generosity is part of what the Buddha described as a context for meditation practice, which he called gladdening the mind, which isn't always um, talked about extensively. The idea is that when we encounter some of the real pain of life um, and we're encountering that pain without um, kind of seeking endless distraction and without trying to deny it and without adding shame and blame and, and all those things that we tend to add to it, we need to be meeting the difficulty that we're experiencing again within a certain context. We can't feel like so exhausted, for example, that we can barely imagine listening to someone's really sad story or facing our own disappointment about something. We need to have some energy. We need to have some sense of sufficiency if we're completely caught up in I could never do enough, I could never be enough, you know, everything is just falling apart completely. Uh, it's hopeless. Uh, it's like we don't have enough sense of inner resource or wherewithal to, to meet the moment. And so um, a lot of what the Buddha talked about in terms of that contextualization was understanding that um, <clears throat> we can build that sense of resource And if we have a sense of resource, we can meet painful experience in a different way without kind of collapsing into it and being so overwhelmed. We can meet joyful and wonderful and beautiful experience in a different way because we're not so desperate to hold on to it and keep it. And so building that sense of resource is important. It was always interesting to me in terms of the Buddhist teaching that Suffering itself is not redemptive. The point is not to suffer. Um, the point is to relate in a certain way to our suffering, because we know that from life, right? We probably all know people who've had a hard time and faced a hard circumstance, and they're bitter, and they're angry, and they feel all alone. Whereas other people might face a hard circumstance and somehow there's some sense of not being so alone, being part of a, a greater community or compassion for themselves and for others as they emerge. So it's not the suffering per se that's the point, but how, how we relate to it and how we meet it. And we want to be able to meet difficult circumstance with as much resource cooking within as we can possibly engender. So that's where gladdening the mind comes in. Um, so we don't feel consumed by, uh, you could say, the darkness. And we recognize, yes, this is here. Yes, this hurts. Yes, this is very painful. And there's also love in this world. There's finding ourselves in one another. There's sometimes a bigger truth that we see that, we are all interconnected. And so um, we move on together in, in some very profound way as a part of life, no matter what has happened to us or is happening to us. Generosity is the beginning of gladdening the mind because it makes us happy.